Gamers, iron farms in vanilla Minecraft usually involve villagers and a zombie to produce iron golems. However, in the create mod, iron farms are a bit different. So my plan is to make a giant iron factory, set up all of the machines required and have a fully automatic iron farm by the end of this episode. All right, first up, we of course need the blocks to build this factory. I've decided on a pallet of bricks, granite and polished andesite, which I feel will work well for a 1900 style of factory building. So first up, the bricks. Okay, as you saw just before, with this setup, I can only smelt one thing at a time, which kind of sucks, to be honest. So I'm going to upgrade this into two separate fan thingamajiglets. Next, we're going to remove these two stone blocks and replace them with some depots. Oh my god, the hell is happening? We're going to place those in like so. So now we're going to be able to smelt four things at a time instead of just one. So let's grab all of our clay here and chuck all of those onto all of these depots. There we go. And now all of those are going to smelt at the same time. And as for our food cooking, we're going to add another second fan on top of this one with another couple of depots up here, like this. We're going to place our campfire like so. Then let's grab our second encased fan. We're going to chuck that in right there. And uh, for some reason, that is now blowing instead of sucking. Uh... God, I don't know how to change that. Okay, I got it working. It turns out I just needed another gearbox there to then invert the, uh, you know, direction. But uh, I don't know what happened to all of my clay that I put on here. Yeah, I put it on them and they're all gone. So I don't know if eventually just gets incinerated or something. I don't know what I did wrong. But uh, yeah, we need to go get a bunch more clay. So time to actually go to bed. <laughs> All right, now with uh, hopefully enough bricks, I mean, we can always go get more if we need it. It's now time to get some granite and andesite. And before we do that, I have decided to uh, go ahead and craft a diamond pickaxe just because, uh, you know, it's going to be very useful for us instead of using these slower and crappier iron ones. And yeah, so let's just make a quick and dirty mine shaft entrance thing, maybe just on the side of this little hill here. And yeah, there we go. Just a simple little uh, cobblestone uh, mine entrance. Looks pretty cool. We'll obviously pretty this up once we get more stuff. And yeah, so I'm just going to extend this down into the ground as far as I can. I'm going to mine a whole bunch of andesite and granite. So yeah, roll the time lapse. Thankfully, we found a massive deposit of granite and andesite not too far down into the mine. So I worked on mining out a bunch of it as we'll be needing a lot. After that was done, I decided to go cave exploring and ended up finding heaps of diamonds, so I mined all of them and made my way back home. Next up, I needed a lot of kelp to make the belts I need for the iron factory. So I made my way out to the nearby ocean and harvested a bunch of it. And after that was done, I headed back home to smelt it all. Now that we're back home, it's time to upgrade all of our tools into some diamond ones. So I made a shovel, axe, a new pickaxe, a sword, and a chest plate, and some leggings too. Next, I just went straight into building our iron factory, starting with flattening off the area. Then it was onto placing in all of the blocks for the layout. And once that was done, I raised all of the pillars up to the correct heights. Then I added the walls in for this small side building and then went on to the brick and granite walls for the main building along with adding in the trims for the roofs. Next, I added some details to this smaller building, finished off the roof for it too, added in the final wall here for the main building, and then I finished off by adding some spruce slabs in for the main building's roof, and I almost forgot I added in this arch detail too. Okay, and there we go. There's our iron factory shell all done. Dude, this thing looks awesome, honestly. I, I couldn't be happier with this freaking build. Oh, except for the skeletons inside. Jesus Christ, what is going on in here? Stop, they're bullying me, man. Get out of here. So yeah, this is our iron factory shell here. We obviously have the uh, floor of the main building. Then we have this little side building and also this little section here. And I'll show you what all these are for when we uh, eventually get to it. But in the meantime, I've also gone ahead and created a whole bunch of different things here. Things that we'll be needing for the factory, of course. And so the first thing I want to tackle is going to be the power situation of the factory. We obviously need something to power all of the machines and everything that's going to be running in here. And so for this, I've gone with some large water wheels. And these are all going to be placed upstairs here on the second floor. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a barrier here so that our water doesn't leak out into this area. I'm also going to need to go get some more bricks to fill in these gaps. Um, give me a second. Coming back, I've also just remembered that we obviously need a door on this as well. And so I've decided to go with some unique blocks to the create mod. We've got an andesite door here, which actually opens like differently if you look. Holy crap, that is awesome, dude. It's literally like a factory door or like a, yeah, you know. 
a factory door. And we also have this as well, framed glass trap doors. These look freaking awesome, dude. Literally looks like exactly like a factory door, which is just awesome, dude. This looks sick. So yeah, now with that done, let's head back upstairs. I wanna fill in these gaps here, even though we don't really need to. I just, uh, you know, it's gonna annoy me knowing that they're there. These ones are fine though. We don't have to worry about them. Now we're gonna start placing our large water wheels in here on this block, I believe, and also on this block. Actually, not that one. This one. There we go. And we're just going to extend this all the way down here up until this spot. And then on this side, we're going to do basically the exact same thing to here, just leaving a, like, you know, one out here. Next, I need to make a quick little infinite water source here to get all of these running. So let's start doing that. Uh, I also need freaking spruce slabs. Oh my God, dude. I will once again be right back. <laughs> okay, we're back with our spruce slabs and I'm going to be using these just to, you know, make these into full blocks so we can actually place the water against them. Now what we can start doing is placing some water up here against these. And yeah, so I'm just going to keep extending this water all the way down to uh, here, basically. Okay, and there we go. That should be all good now. We have all of our water wheels running at, uh, well, hopefully what should be maximum speed. Next, what we need to do is place a shaft on this bad boy here. And then over on this one, we need to place a gearbox. Because as you can see, this one's spinning clockwise, but this one's spinning counterclockwise. And we want them to both be, uh, you know, the same direction. So we're going to place a gearbox, which actually inverts the spinning direction here. And now we're going to place another shaft on this so that they're both going to be linked up with a belt here. So we're going to right click this one and then right click this one. You can see this kind of beam between them. And then, uh, you know, that makes a belt, which is pretty cool. We're going to be using a lot of these down below to carry our items between different machines. So yeah, I just thought I'd mention that. <laughs> Next, what we're going to do is right click the end of this to extend it down to the end. Oh my God, if I can, there we go. We also need to put a shaft back in there. So that's still linked up. Now from here, we're going to place another gearbox like this. And this is where we're going to be grabbing out our cogs and everything. And uh, also the andesite casing that I don't have. Oh my god. Okay, I'm back and I've got a whole bunch of andesite casing to do our gear ratio stuff, uh, which I did explain in the first episode, so I'm not really gonna bother explaining it again to you guys. Uh, but yeah, we're basically, okay, I'm explaining it, but shut up. <laughs> I'm just using these cogs going from large to small to large to small to uh, speed up the, uh, you know, the spinning speedness. So just give me a second and I'll get this done. Okay, and there we go. There's our final speed. As you can see, it's uh, pretty quick. So all of our stuff is gonna be running nice and efficiently. Next, I'm gonna branch this off over this way and then into a vertical gear box here, like so. And we're going to extend this all the way down to this spot right here. Then we're actually going to head back upstairs because we're going to add a nice little decoration at the front of our uh, little thingy here. So I'm actually going to take a small cog wheel off of this cog here and then vertical gearbox right there. And we're going to quickly head outside to add our nice little decoration on. Okay. And so for this little decoration, we're going to place another thing here. And we're also going to place an andesite casing on this. So it's nice and like solid looking. I don't know. It just looks better. Then we're going to place a small cog, big cog, small, big, small. And there we go. That's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think that looks really cool. Just like a nice little moving cog decoration thing. But yeah, so that's pretty much our power situation sorted for the entire factory. This should hopefully be enough for everything we're wanting to run. So next, what it's time to do is to bring this power down through here and then into this area. I actually need to dig this out as well. So I'm probably going to go ahead and dig this out real quick and uh, I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. There's our big hole dug out. I've also gone ahead and just brought the power down here as well, all the way from our, uh, you know, factory area here. And so I should probably explain what we're going to be doing down here. And that is our, uh, you know, cobblestone excavation site. Now, I know I could definitely do this, you know, probably up here in this room, but I don't know. I just felt it looked cool having the, uh, you know, cobblestone excavation actually coming from the ground here and up into these belts into the uh, actual factory. So right now I'm just connecting the belts up that we're going to be using, of course, uh, that are going to, you know, hold the cobblestone on them. Okay, and now so in here we need to have our, uh, you know, drills that are going to be excavating the cobblestone. So on this left side here, we're going to have three like so, and on the other side here, we're of course going to, you know, have another three. And now I didn't really know how to, uh, you know, make some in the middle, except for having them on top, which I didn't really know how to do. So instead, we're actually going to extend this middle belt down this way and have them, uh, you know, being excavated from down here instead. And then down here, we'll of course have another three drills like this. Next, we need to get power to all of these drills and all of these belts as well. So we're of course going to uh, bring this over from here. And now to power these three drills, let's just chuck a bunch of cogs on there like so. And now you'll see that these are all spinning nicely. Next, I'm going to branch this wheel down and then connect it up to our belt here. And as you can see, this is spinning the wrong way. So what we need to do is actually remove that and probably put it in this middle one here. Now that one's spinning the right way. And if we just, uh, you know, connect one up into there, there you go. Now I'm going to branch this over to this side as well to power that one. And then to power these three drills, we'll do the same thing with these cog wheels. Oh my god, dude, this thunder is getting kind of annoying. No, this is a zombie. 
Oh, he's stuck on the freaking belt. Look at him. Look at him. What an idiot. Oh god, now I'm stuck on the belt. Okay, next, I think we should get power to these big main belts here. So let's head back this way. Let's attach another two cogs here, like so. And that should be now spinning the right way. And there we go. There's all of our belts powered. Hell yeah. Oh, we still need to power down here. So let's actually work on that now, like that. And then we're going to connect that up like so. And there we go. There's all of our belts powered, all of our drills powered. All we need to do now is set up the, uh, you know, cobblestone generator part of it. And now we should be able to just place one on here, one on here, and then our last one down here as well. And as you can see, those make stone. I don't know why it isn't cobblestone. I guess that's something with create mod. Uh, but yeah, we're just not going to question it. Let's power this on and we should see our drills are going to be, uh, you know, digging all of this stone, of course, turning into cobblestone, which is what we want. And it's sending it all the way up these belts here. I uh, actually need to go up here before we, uh, you know, get overloaded with blocks here. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> So if we put some blocks here in front of these, it'll actually stop those belts. And uh, yeah, there we go. So we can just do that while we work on everything in here. But dude, look at how much cobblestone we got from that already. That's like almost three stacks. Jesus Christ, man. Okay, I've just gone ahead and turned the power off for down here. Uh, I can't remember where I turned it off at, but it doesn't really matter because now it is time to get into the serious stuff, okay? Everything in here is going to be kind of crazy, all right? So I'm going to remove these blocks because we don't need them here anymore. And what I'm going to do now is start bringing these out into our factory area. And now it's time to turn these belts belts off to the left here into our main factory area. And we're going to do that by placing, uh, not like that. Oh, I can rotate them with the wrench. Dude, that is so useful. I don't know why I didn't even think of that before, but uh, yeah, there we go. And I don't know exactly how far I'm going to go with these. So for now, let's just place a bunch of shafts like this. I'm going to remove these two and then let's place our belts in like so. And then we can just use this to extend it as far out as we want to go, you know? Actually, I just realized I messed up with this one here. This one's actually going to be going up instead of straight. Because we don't really have room for it to go straight. Then this is going to go from here over to this one like so. There we go. Okay, and now we have like three individual little shaft. Uh, shaft, well not shaft, but uh, you know, belts here. And it's also going to be three separated sections for our millstones here. And let's go ahead and start actually adding these in like so. so we're going to have four for each track to have, uh, you know, maximum efficiency. We could probably do with more, but I think four will be good enough for now. Okay, so there's all of our millstones in, and now we need a way for the cobblestone to be sucked up into the millstones to then be turned into gravel. And to do that, we have these andesite funnels here. We're going to be placing them on every single millstone here. And then as you can see, we have this arrow here. We actually need that to point in towards the millstone to signify, you know, that it... Oh, oh Jesus Christ. To signify that we want the items to be sucked into the millstone that way. And now we're just going to do this exact same thing on to every single one here real quick. Next, we do need to add a whole bunch as well underneath these. But before we do that, I actually want to add the belt system under here to, you know, take away the gravel that's going to be excavated. So actually, I don't think we have to remove this floor here. We could probably do it like this. Place our shafts all along across here. God, I hope we're going to have enough room here. Freaking A. And then these are going to go over to an encased fan that's actually going to be washing the gravel. That's not an encased fan. What am I doing? Oh, did I not make one? I didn't make one. God damn it. Give me a second. I'll be right back with the encased fan. Okay, I'm back with the fan. Let's go ahead and place this in right here, here. And so in front of it, we're going to be placing some water. And that's because we want to wash these gravel blocks. So there we go. Let's place our water in, not in the slab. There we go. Next, we do need to add a wall here because these gravel blocks are going to be, you know, thrown out here and we want them to stay in line of this little washer later. And then these are all going to be blowing into one of these, which is an item vault. It's basically just a giant chest, but you can't actually, you know, access it. If you might be able to hear my clicks. Uh, yeah, you can't get inside of it, but you can place and take items out of it using these bad boys. Uh, where, there it is. Uh, yeah, the endosite funnels. But we're just going to leave it like that for now. Let's get back to uh, this freaking amount of crap everywhere here. We actually need to add our funnels onto the bottom of these. Okay. But yeah, it is now time to get everything powered. So give me a second and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Everything is running. Everything is powered. It's probably not done in the most efficient way possible, but uh, with my limited knowledge, uh, it's looking pretty good to me. So now we should be safe to re-enable our uh, cobblestone processing down here. So let me just relink this up. Oh no, overstressed. Crap. <laughs> So when it's overstressed, that basically means that we have too many machines and not enough uh, stuff generating power. And ooh, I might actually have an idea on how to fix it if I can get up here. God freaking amen. We should be able to fit in some small water wheels along here possibly and hook it up to our stuff here. So I'm actually going to go quickly make some more water wheels real quick uh, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back with eight little water wheels. Uh, hopefully that's going to be enough. So now what we can do is head up here and we should be able to add them in here. 
Yes, there we go. As you can see, it is spinning thanks to the water on this side. There we go. Now we're not stressed. So we only actually needed one more. Uh, I mean, we probably will need to add more in because we do have a couple more machines to make. But there you go. As you can see, everything is running. Our cobblestone is now coming up from our cobblestone generators onto these belts and then being sucked into these millstones here. Once it's turned to gravel, it's going along the belt here and then pushed down out here where it is then being washed by our fan and turned into flint and iron nuggets. There we go. Now with this, we do have a slight problem. We need a way to filter out the iron nuggets and the flint from this and not pick up the gravel. We want the gravel to stay there until it has been washed and processed into nuggets and flint. And well, we can't really do that with these regular andesite funnels. These just pretty much suck up absolutely everything they can get their slimy hands on. So what we need is one step up from this. We need a brass funnel. So if we just search that here and click on brass funnel, we can see how to make it. So to make two of these bad boys, we need something called an electron tube, brass ingot, and dried kelp. That's easy enough. We already have dried kelp. Let's see how to make brass ingots, because I actually have no idea. <laughs> Okay, so we need a mixer, which is a mechanical mixer and a basin, and we need to combine zinc ingots and copper ingots. Mix that together, and that makes brass. So let's quickly go do that right now. Okay, there is the wick... The wicks? The whisk for our mixer. Next, we need an andesite casing here, and then I believe it's a small cog wheel, if my memory is right. There we go, mechanical mixer. And then for a basin, we just need a U-shape of andesite alloy, and there we go. Now, I want to add this in down here, but uh, it's kind of set up not very greatly. We don't really have any way to uh, add a machine in here easily. And so someone actually suggested in the first episode that if we add small water wheels here, it'll actually speed up our, uh, you know, speed here. As you can see, it's pretty slow. So let's try removing this and adding a water wheel wheel here. Now, I don't know if that's actually faster or not. But yeah, basically the way this is laid out kind of sucks. So I'm just going to remove everything. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I wasn't kidding. <laughs> now, this ladder, uh, although it looks pretty cool, it's starting to piss me off. So let's get rid of it and move it somewhere else because, yeah, it's very frustrating. So I reckon over here in this corner might be a, uh, a bit of a better spot. Let's add it in here. Now, I want a way to make this faster without having to do all the gear ratio stuff right here. And I think a better way to do it would be to, instead of bringing the power down here, let's actually bring it down outside and then go underground and then come up through here. You know what I'm trying to say? So let's get rid of that because... I actually, I don't think that's making it faster. I think whoever said that is a complete and total liar, or I'm an idiot. Might be a bit of both, maybe. Actually, it might be because the water wasn't hitting it. So yeah, that's the same speed. Let's put some water on it. That's definitely faster. Okay, my apologies. You were right. I'm actually an idiot. That's that, that's all it was. Okay, that's pretty good. That's already solved a little bit of the gear ratio crap that we had to deal with before, but I still need it to be faster. So let's remove this part of the wall here. We're going to bring this all the way down here underground. And uh, we do have a big gaping hole in our wall now, but what we can actually do is place some andesite casing on this to make it a full block once again. It looks pretty nice as well. Okay, now let's extend this down even further. And this is where we're going to now start our gear ratio stuff. Okay, and there we go. Now our gear ratio stuff is underground here and we have our power coming straight up through here which is awesome we can also put a casing on that to cover up the ugly hole in the floor hell yes now it's time to add all of our stuff back in starting with our smelting wall i think i want to actually put this one block into the ground instead of how it was before because it was very uh kind of annoying trying to access the top layer so i think this will be a bit of a better setup uh, it's a little bit weird looking but uh it does the job at least okay now the final thing to do here for our uh you know smelting setup is to add our campfire back in and also our last lava back in as well. And now we can put our lava in there and there we go. Now we can smelt five items at a time, or well, technically 10 at a time if we have a lot of food as well that we want to smelt. Okay, now let's get our mechanical press and mixer put into place. So first let's get the press placed in right here. And then because the power for the mixer is actually by like a cog thing, which is kind of annoying, we're going to have to space them apart by one block. We can also put our basin underneath that too. Now we need to figure out how to get freaking power to these things. Oh, and it's overstressed. No, that's not what we wanted to see. That means means our water wheels here are just not enough for everything we're wanting to power at the speed that it's at at least. The hell are you doing, buddy? Get the f*** out of here. Well, we're gonna have to probably just uh, slow it down by one ratio thing. So yeah, there we go. Now everything's working again, except, uh, you know, it's just a little bit slower until we figure out how to add some more power to this. I might even add some underground like turbines, kind of like how we did for our iron factory up at the top there. But for now, this should be fine. And now, uh, what, what was I doing with this again? I <laughs> literally cannot remember. That's right, we wanted to make brass. Okay, so for brass, we actually need to add a heating source underneath the basin. So let's quickly make another campfire. Do 
we need to put a copper ingot and zinc ingot in. So we actually have a little bit of both of those. Okay, there's our zinc. Now let's go ahead and just throw one of each in and hopefully that's going to work. Okay, let's throw our one zinc in and our one iron ingot in. I mean, copper ingot and uh, it's not working. It's one of each. Why is that not working? Do we need a blaze burner under this? Okay, so it turns out a campfire just simply is not hot enough for this and we need something called a blaze burner. So for this, we need four iron sheets, which I have already pre-prepared right here. And we also need netherrack, which means we need to go to the nether. We also need to find a blaze and capture the blaze inside of this. And that actually works out perfectly because for the brass funnels that we're trying to make, we actually need an electron tube as well. And this needs something called polished rose quartz. And then to get the rose quartz, we need nether quartz. So it's all good. We need to head to the nether anyway. So now we need to find a nether fortress with a blaze and also some nether quartz. And thankfully, I already mined some obsidian while I was down mining before. And now let's make our nether portal. I kind of want to make like a quick little shrine thing up here for it, I guess. It might look cool. And there we go. We now have access to the nether. Let's, uh, you know, let's let's go inside. <laughs> okay, here we are. I've just marked down the coordinates for the, the portal. Don't worry about that. We're also in a very annoying biome to traverse in, which kind of sucks. But uh, let's head over this way. Actually, we do need a netherrack for the burner itself. So let's actually craft that real quick. There we go. There's our empty blaze burner. Now we just need to uh, right click a blaze while holding this to capture its essence inside. So uh, yeah, it's time to go on a bit of an adventure. Yes, dude, there is a fortress here. Thank God we don't have to go any further than that. Hell yes. Now all we need is a single blaze and we're freaking out of here, man. Okay, here's our blaze. Sorry, mate, but you're captured in here for eternity. And uh, yeah, there we go. With our blaze in hand, we can now return back to the nether portal. Okay, now that we're back from the nether, let's go ahead and replace our campfire here with a blaze burner. There we go. Look at that bad boy. And there he's even looking at me. That's actually kind of creepy. Now let's go ahead and throw our copper and zinc inside here. And then we need to actually fuel this with some coal. So there you go, buddy. And there we go. Now our mixer is mixing the good juicy stuff up. We can actually see what's in there. There we go. Brass ingot. Okay, there we go. There's our 12 brass brass ingots is all done. The next thing we need for our brass funnels is an electron tube. And to make this, we need the polished rose quartz, which needs a deployer, or you can actually make it with uh, sandpaper over here. And then to make the sandpaper, all we need is just some sand and literally paper. There we go. Let's place that in our offhand and sandpaper it. That is a pretty cool animation if I do say so myself. And there we go. We have seven polished rose quartz. Now, finally, to make our electron tubes, we need iron sheets. So uh, yeah, let's uh, make some of them. Dude, I I just realized this creepy little blaze guy is now going to be peeking at me through under the freaking floorboards now. God damn it. Okay, electron tubes now finally done. Holy crap. Bang, bang, and finally bang. There's our brass funnels all done. We actually only need three, so uh, yeah, we might as well just save these components for uh, you know, a future project. All right, now with our brass funnels in hand, let's head back over to the iron factory. <laughs> Okay, we're back. Now, let's actually halt production for a second, just so we can sort this crap out here. Holy, oh my god, there's already so much stuff here, dude. What the hell? Okay, so because our gravel is getting pushed down here, we want the uh, final products to be put inside of our vault here. And so what we have to do to filter out the gravel is place our brass filter on here. And I also went ahead and made a list filter, and we can set that by right-clicking here. And then we want to put gravel in and put it on the deny list. This means that once we tick this and put this inside right here, that that means now this funnel will allow everything inside except for gravel. And we can actually test that out by placing a funnel here with a chest below and then we'll have a chute as well. And now if we turn production back on, you should see the gravel will be sitting here. And then once it gets washed, the iron nuggets and the flint will get put into this chest. Uh, let's just give it a second. Uh, it would probably help to face this the right way. <laughs> There we go. Now we can see our items coming out into the chest here down below. Hell yeah. Now having a setup like this is kind of cool, but uh, it's kind of annoying as well because we don't want to have to craft all of these iron nuggets into iron ingots. So we're actually going to remove this and uh, have it be automatic instead. So firstly, we're going to place a, another brass funnel here. And at this time, we're going to filter it with an iron nugget. So only iron nuggets will come out of here. Then we're going to have this go onto a belt like so. And then this is going to go up into a basin here. And we're going to have our mechanical press above 
above that too. Let's have another belt like so, and then that'll be sucked in by an andesite funnel into our chest. Oh, Jesus, okay, did not mean to do that. And uh, yeah, now we need to get all of this crap powered. <laughs> okay, and it looks like we are now overstressed again, so we're gonna have to add some more water wheels to our thing upstairs, and uh, there they are. Uh, hopefully six is going to be enough. Let's add those in. There we go. We might as well just add all of them in for future proof's sake in case we want to expand a little. And uh, god damn it, of course they're both spinning the wrong way. It's okay. We should be able to fix it by removing this and placing another gearbox in. There we go. And so yeah, that's pretty much it. That marks the completion of our iron factory here. Everything is now fully automated from the harvesting to the grinding into gravel to the washing into iron ingots and flint. And then we have it automatically being crafted into iron ingots. Hell yes. The last thing we now need to deal with is actually getting rid of all of the flint because this vault is going to quickly fill up with a bunch of flint that we don't really want. So I'm going to uh, quickly sleep first. And so to sort out our flint situation here, let's actually remove uh, part of this wall here. Okay, so let's have that come out of a brass funnel here. We're going to set that to only flint. So only flint is going to come out. We'll put our chest underneath here and then we'll also have our chute above there. So the items go straight into the chest instead of on the freaking ground like all of this crap. And now uh, this is uh, obviously going to fill up very quickly and we're just going to probably have flint up here and I'll probably just change this into like, uh, you know, just a lava source or something because I don't think we'll ever need this much bloody flint. But uh, yeah, now we have our disposal uh, unit set up here with our flint. We have our iron being automatically crafted, which is just awesome, dude. And yeah, so now with our newfound iron wealth, I'm now going to be able to uh, pretty up the exterior of this whole build here. I'm going to add a nice fence surrounding it, a whole bunch of nice details everywhere. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to get started doing that right now. So, first up, the fence. I went with a design using iron bars for the main fence with stone brick walls for the posts and I also added lanterns on top of those too. Next, I added some details like barrels, cobblestone and iron blocks and I also added a path too. And I of course extended this towards our base and you might notice there's a river between the path and the base so logically it was time to create a nice arched stone bridge. I added a section under it so you can still get through with a boat, then I cleaned up the arch design, sprinkled in some stone on the walls for some detailing, added a walkway made of spruce and finish the bridge up with some lanterns as well. And to finish up the path, I added some lanterns and some various other details too. And hell yeah, there we go. With all of that done, our area is looking awesome now. We've got a massive bridge here to connect up our starter base to our brand new iron factory. I don't have to swim across the water every time now to get over here. And we also have a new pathway as well to connect everything up together. And yeah, so I definitely call this episode a very big success. I'm so happy with everything we got done here. But yeah, that's just about everything I wanted to get done in this episode. So Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.